Hello everyone, it's Tracy. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks very much for joining me. So today I'm doing an assembly tutorial for a little book that I made and I featured it in a design team project share a couple of weeks ago using a nesting die set from the KLJ UYP store. The nesting die set used was designed by Nicole Silhouette here on YouTube and I shall link her YouTube channel in the description box below. And as I said, the die set is available from the KLJ UYP Lovers store and I shall link that store in the description box below. So here is the little book that I made. And since making this one, I have actually fine tuned the way I'm making them. This one had a lot of mistakes. So earlier today, I made this one with all my fine tuning adjustments. And I'm much happier with the way this one's turned out. There's not much difference between this grey book and the one that I showed just before, the completed one. It's just this one's a lot more fine-tuned and a little bit easier to put together. So this is the die set that we're using. And we're going to be using the largest die from the set and the second from largest die from the set. And that's just for the construction of the book. We're also going to be needing some card cut. We're going to need two pieces cut six inches by four and a quarter inches and we'll need two of those. You'll also need one piece that is one and three quarters of an inch by three and one quarter of an inch and you'll just need one of those. And a smaller piece that is seven eighths of an inch by one and three quarters of an inch. And using the second from largest die, we're going to cut 12 of that shape. So I've got those 12 pieces there. We'll put them aside for later. Now using the largest die, we're going to do some partial die cutting and we're going to get one of those six inch by four and a quarter inch pieces. We're going to put the die down and we're going to make sure that the right hand edge of that die is exactly one inch from the right hand edge of that piece of card as I'm indicating here. I'm going to tape the die down in place and then I'm going to bring in my cutting plates from my Big Shot machine. So I'm going to show you the partial die cutting. So I'm going to put that onto the clear base plate and we're going to get the top plate and we're just going to put it so that that right hand edge of the die is not under the plate. So what will cut will be under the plate and what's not under the plate won't cut. And just to make sure that things don't move, I'm going to tape that top plate to the bottom of the bottom plate there. And I use a magnetic base plate. And I'm gonna run that through my Big Shot. And you can see when I take the die away, that it's not cut that edge and I don't want it to. So I'll go ahead and do another one of those exactly the same with the other sheet of six inch by four and a quarter inch. Just place the die down onto the cardstock, making sure that there's a one inch space between the right hand edge of the die and the right hand edge of the cardstock. And I'm going to tape the die in place and get the top plate of my die cutting machine on the top there. It's almost right up against that edge of the die. And again, I'm going to tape that top plate into place so it does, things don't move. Run that through my die cutting machine. And there we have a partially die cut shape. So I should have two of those. Now I'm going to get my metal ruler and my scalpel and I'm going to cut a straight line from where that die cut finishes to the end. And what we're making here is the spine of the book, which will make more sense as we go along. So I'm just completing my cut there.
and I'm going to do the same with the other piece. You could use scissors here, it wouldn't matter, as long as your cut was straight. Just doing the same thing as before. Just complete a couple of the cuts there. Now what I'm going to do is get my scoreboard and I'm going to run a score line where I'm indicating here. That's basically where the cut would have been if we'd cut it all the way through. This now become a score line. So when you put the two pieces together like this, you can see we've got our front and our back cover of our book with a spine of about an inch, well it is an inch, for our pages. So I've just put some double sided adhesive onto one of those one inch areas of that front or back of the book and I'm sticking the other one onto there. Just pressing it down into place. And now you can see we've got our front and back cover of our book. So moving on to our next piece here, and this is the piece that measures one and three quarters of an inch by three and a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to put it on the scoreboard and we're going to make a shape that's like this. And this is going to hold our pages. So when you're looking at it, we've got an eighth of an inch and then a quarter of an inch, then an eighth, a quarter and so on. So I've just zoomed in a little there for you so you can see. So the first score line is an eighth of an inch, then a quarter, another quarter, then an eighth. Then we've got a quarter, a quarter, an eighth, quarter, quarter, and then an eighth, quarter, quarter, and an eighth, quarter, quarter, and the last one there is an eighth. And it's easy to do with that scoreboard because the lines are one eighth of an inch apart. So I'm just showing you there, eighth, quarter, quarter, 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 eighth. So I've gone ahead and folded this, but I'm going to show you the folds. So the first one is a valley fold with the one eighth of an inch part then the quarter of an inch part becomes a mountain fold. Then the next one is a valley. And you can see the valley folds are what those one eighth of an inch areas are. And the mountain folds are the quarter of an inch areas. So mountain, valley, valley, mountain, valley, valley, mountain. And the last one's a valley. So we need to stick this together now and this is what it will look like when it's done. And these pieces hold the pages. And I don't like a big gap between my pages so that's why it's only one eighth of an inch. You could do quarter of an inch between but you would need to change your measurement of your spine. But this is the shape that we're aiming for at the end. So this is the back of what I've folded and we're going to put tape, adhesive tape, in the one quarter of an inch areas. So I'll just show you, that's the first bit of tape going down. The one eighth of an inch areas do not get tape. So I'm just going to put that in, take the backing off and fold it in. And burnish, you have to burnish these really well so they get a good stick. So I'll put it down on my work surface and give it a good burnish. And you can see it's starting to take shape. So we move to the next quarter of an inch area and we're gonna put tape along there. So we're leaving the one eighth of an inch areas alone. As I'm indicating there, we don't put anything on the one eighth of an inch area. So just push that together and then burnish it really well and that's our second one done. So I'm sure you can see the gist of how this is going. So we're just putting a quarter inch piece of tape just along that area there. My bit was a bit long, just need to trim it. 
remove the backing paper and fold it in giving it a good press and then giving it a good burnish and so we've got our third one done and we'll just keep moving along here and we're going to put tape on the next one so my book's going to have five pages so we've got five of these to put in so we're just doing the fourth one take the release paper off and press that into place just doing it like that just might be easier to see and giving it a good burnish you can now see it's well and truly taking shape now and we just got our last piece to put into place for the fifth page just pressing that into place and give it a good burnish so our page holder piece now is taking shape as you can see here and each of those pieces holds a page but as you can see it is a little bit floppy so what I have is another piece which is that seven eighths of an inch piece by one and three quarters of an inch which I'm going to bring in now and that will be attached to the back of that piece as I'm indicating here so I'm going to go ahead and put double sided tape on the back of that piece and glue it to there so I've got the double sided tape in place and I'm just going to glue it to the back of the pages holder just lining it up making sure I'm getting it straight and then press it down and I will give this a really good burnish and the tape I'm using is the Sukwang tape and that is very strong best double sided tape I've ever used actually so just burnishing all those areas is this you need to have this part strong so I'm happy with how that's coming along now and this part will get glued on to the front and back covers which I shall bring in and we're going to put double sided tape on that part there and that will get attached to the spine of the book there so I'm going to go ahead and put double sided tape on the back take the release paper off and position it in the spine part of the book which is between the front and back cover just going to get it central before pressing it into place and again I will burnish this really well and that's nearly the hardest part of the book done I'm just showing you there how that's going to look and we just need to attach our pages but before we do that we do need to put some double sided tape on each side of those pages holders and that could be done before you stuck it down it's up to you it doesn't matter when so I've gone ahead and put the double sided tape on each side of them as you can see here and I'm using Sukwang 1 8 of an inch tape making sure I give the, the tape a good burnish on each side you could use glue here if you wanted to but I just thought for this particular project the double sided tape was a lot easier and a lot neater but I will be using glue for the next step to finish off the book so I've got my 12 pieces here that I cut earlier and these are going to be our pages and I'm going to be using art glitter glue 
So we're going to glue our pages together, two pages together, and we're going to glue them together, wrong sides together, so the pretty sides facing out. But we're not going to glue all the way down to the bottom there. We're going to leave about a quarter of an inch. And that's so that we can attach them to the pages holders. So that's one page. And there are many, probably many different ways to put these books together. I've used an adaption of what I've seen on YouTube and then my own method. So if you can see a way to do something quicker or better, then by all means you do that. Do what works for you. And I'm using glue here because it's a little, lot more economical than using double-sided tape for this particular part. Just make sure you leave your quarter of an inch down the bottom so that you can attach it to your pages holders. So just working through getting the pages glued together, leaving that little gap at the bottom. So that's finishing off our fourth page. And we're just moving on to the fifth one and get that done. And once you've got your fifth page stuck, and finished then you should have two pieces left over so we'll talk about those in a minute so we're just going to set those aside for now and it's time to put our pages into the book so one of the pages holders here we're going to remove the release paper from both sides and pick up one of the pages make sure we've got our opening at the bottom and then just line it up and put one side on one side of the pages holder and the other side. So we're sandwiching it in between down the bottom, if that makes sense. So just give it a good burnish and I'm actually going to zoom in so you can get a better look. So making sure we've got our opening at the bottom, remove the release paper from both sides and then we're just going to slide that in over the top so that the pages holder is in between each side of the page and that's why the pages are doubled up. It also gives strength to the pages as well and it's a nice neat finish too. Like I said this is just the way I chose to make this book. You do what works for you. just removing that release paper sliding that in over the top and pressing it against the adhesive burnishing it as well so it gets a good stick last page oops sorry for the camera shake there I knocked the cord I was getting excited because it's nearly finished Just popping that over the top, burnishing it each side, and that's our last page in. So that's our book done. But you'll see that the covers are quite flimsy, so that's where those other pieces are coming are coming in. And I'm going to glue them to the inside cover. But what you can do before you glue them in, you can put your ribbon underneath and sandwich it underneath if you wanted a ribbon closure, or you could even do a magnetic closure, whatever you like. So I'm just sticking this last piece into place and then the little book is finished and you could go ahead then and decorate this any way you like. Even using the rest of the nesting dies that are part of this set. So that's my tutorial finished for today. I hope you've enjoyed watching and that you've gotten some inspiration and you might like to try and make one of these little books yourself. They're a lot of fun and not that terribly hard to make. Don't forget to check the description box down below for the link to the KLJUYP Lovers Store to where you can buy this nesting die set. If you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I would really love that too. Thanks very much for watching today. Have a great day and until next time, it's bye for now.